Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today in gaming, Battlefield 2042 cheat makers are already hard at work. The Activision Blizzard lawsuit expands, Hell Let Loose is going live on console, and much more. Cheat makers are advertising hacks for Battlefield 2042. The game launches in October and cheat makers say their cheats will be undetectable. Available cheats include an aimbot, ESP, a cheat radar, cheat menu, and more. Ads for cheats that predate the launch of a game are nothing new, but it is concerning in Battlefield 2042's case thanks to a recent data breach that leaked source code from FIFA 21 and the Frostbite engine. The hackers involved in the breach claim that they found exploits that will work on most Frostbite Frostbite engine games such as Battlefield, but it's unclear if these exploits are legitimate concerns or not. Battlefield 2042 is running on a newer version of the Frostbite engine, and there weren't any leaks concerning cheaters during the game's technical playtest either. Despite the hackers releasing the files, we haven't seen or heard about any Battlefield-related files within them. The good news is that Battlefield 2042 will allegedly utilize Easy Anti-Cheat, a popular and well-regarded system. Of course, this info is based on leaks from the game technical playtest, ultimately it's not a matter of if Battlefield 2042 will have cheats made for it, it's a matter of when. And the same really applies to pretty much all multiplayer games ever. Eventually someone will figure out hacks. The real test for DICE will be how they detect, block cheats, and just deal with the longevity of cheating in Battlefield. Unfortunately though, their track record isn't too great. All past Battlefield games rely predominantly on server admins to ban cheaters. Cheating in Battlefield 5 was especially bad because custom servers didn't have permanent ban lists. And things may be a bit different in 2042 since they are allowing admins to have permanent ban lists. But that's still not an excuse for DICE to not take cheating seriously. Hopefully the combination of easy anti-cheat and whatever other anti-cheat measures are being implemented in Battlefield 2042 will be enough to prevent an epidemic. On another note, it sounds like internal playtests of 2042 are going well. One dev tweeted today about their experience saying that they can't wait for players to get their hands on the open beta. The technical playtest allegedly ran quite poorly for many players and it's likely that the devs are playtesting the game's beta build. This tweet is at least some sign that playtests have been a fun experience for the devs. Before we get to the rest of today's stories, just a heads up that we might have breaking coverage of new battle Battlefield 2042 gameplay to share later this afternoon. We'll have to wait and see. In more positive EA news, the company has released a new accessibility first patent pledge. They're working with the developers to share tools like the ping system in Apex Legends. They're making these tools freely available to any dev that wants them and have also released open source versions of their tunable color blindness solution on GitHub. The California lawsuit against Activision Blizzard over workplace harassment just got more serious. The state is expanding its lawsuit to include temporary workers like QA and customer support staff. The state is also alleging that Activision Blizzard has been destroying documents related to the case, forcing employees to sign NDAs, and requiring employees to talk with them before talking to the state's attorneys. Activision Blizzard responded to the claims by saying that they're false and that they took appropriate steps to preserve information relevant to the investigation. At least one employee of the company, Jessica Gonzalez, has spoken publicly about the allegations saying, shame on HR. Time to unionize. I will be screaming this from the hilltops now. Feels so gross working here right now. Following tweets from Jessica say that other employees have been rude to her about the allegations. One employee said, who cares? And someone else referred to her as a mouthpiece. Halo Infinite is launching on December 8th. The Microsoft Store briefly listed the date in some regions. The date was just confirmed during the Halo Infinite segment of Gamescom's opening night live event. 343 recently announced that major features like co-op campaign and forge mode won't be available at launch. According to reports, they chose to delay these features for a few more months instead of delaying the entire game until they were ready. The game's next playtest will offer a comprehensive selection of modes and more PvP combat, but it doesn't have a firm release date yet. Impressions from the first playtest were very positive despite its limited content. Hell Let Loose is having a free-to-play weekend on the PlayStation 5 starting tomorrow. It's technically a closed beta as the game isn't officially launching on consoles until later this year. You can get into the beta by registering for it on the game's website. You'll still have to be invited to participate so registration doesn't guarantee access. You'll also have to sign an NDA that prohibits you from sharing gameplay or information about your experience. The closed beta ends on the 31st. 
AMD released a Ryzen CPU chipset update with critical security fixes. Hardware level exploits are no joke. Attacks that take advantage of those exploits generally require physical access to your computer, but they can be incredibly devastating. Something as simple as plugging in the wrong USB drive can infect your computer with malware that gives hackers remote access to your entire PC. These sorts of security fixes are not uncommon or really specific to just AMD alone. Users running Windows 10 should get the update automatically via Windows Update. Check your motherboard support page for updated chipset drivers just to be sure. A new Saints Row game was just announced at Gamescom. It'll be a reboot of the franchise launching February 25th next year. Key features of the new game include an original story, a new Western America location, tons of guns, co-op, and a huge amount of customization. They showed a brief gameplay teaser after the cinematic reveal trailer and everything looks top notch. Streamer Dr. Disrespect has finally opened up about his infamous Twitch ban. The platform booted Doc in June of last year for an unspecified reason. This of course was a huge deal because he was one of the platform's biggest streamers, so to kick him off without any word about why was of course very odd. At the time, Doc claimed that Twitch didn't tell him why, however, he found out the reason a few months ago and is now actively suing the company over the ban. Doc talked about the situation in a recent stream. He says that the ban has prevented him from securing major sponsors since it's the first thing that many people know about him. He's likely suing Twitch for violating his contract, damaging his reputation, and hurting his income. Doc says he's only making a quarter of his Twitch revenue streaming over on YouTube. Chernobyl Light's console launch has been delayed by three weeks. It was initially scheduled to launch on September 7th, but will now launch on the 28th. The delay was made because of unforeseen issues with the console build. The game runs pretty well on PC these days, and the same should be true for console versions when it eventually launches. Before we get to our final story today, just want to say thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe and enable notifications if you haven't already. That'll keep you in the loop whenever we upload and helps the channel reach new viewers. Bungie are warning Destiny 2 players that the game's new anti-cheat solution might have an impact on performance. They just added the BattleEye anti-cheat system with the game's most recent update. It requires additional resources, reducing your overall FPS, and increasing the game's initial startup time. All that said, the impact should be pretty minimal. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll keep you updated on any sort of Battlefield information that comes out of Gamescom.